Chapter 5, Section 3, Question 1. You'll remember in previous classes that if we had 1 7th plus 2 7ths, that we would get 3 7ths. But when we were showing our work, to support us in getting ready for Chapter 6, we would write it as 1 plus 2 over the common denominator 7, and then we would get 3 7ths. So this step here, this is how we add fractions. And what we're going to do to divide them is we're actually going to take it from this step and break it up into the little fractions. Because this is a trinomial, three terms on top, we're going to break it up into three little fractions. That will take us back into chapter one where we'll reduce, 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 and get our answer. All right. Keep those adding and subtracting symbols in between your fractions. Make sure you keep copying the bottom, which is the denominator, correctly each time. I would give you half credit for getting this far as long as you actually copied these all correctly. But wait, there's more. From chapter one, in chapter one, section five, we could have had a problem just like this. Eight divided by eight is one. X to the sixth divided by X to the fourth, it says divide, but you really subtract, you get X squared. This would give you a negative one, and remember a negative one would put it on the bottom. Another way to look at this is there's two Y's on the top, there are three Y's on the bottom, and these will cancel, leaving you with one Y on the bottom. Ta-da! That's how that reduces. That's a chapter one problem. And then we're going to continue on. I'm going to put a vinculum here just in case. 16 divided by 8 is 2. 16 was bigger, that's why the 2 goes on top. 4 and 4 subtract and give you 0. Remember from chapter 1 that x to the 0 equals 1 and x cannot equal 0 because then you would be dividing by 0. So this cancels out entirely. Now I have four y's on the top, three y's on the bottom. These will cancel, leaving me with one y on the top. Huh, I did not actually need my vinculum, but if you do have it, then you'd have to put a one on the bottom. But we can also just leave it as two y, and that's fine. Minus 12 over eight. That is a fraction and it doesn't divide nicely. So we're going to divide. I could divide by 2, but I can do better. I can divide both of these by 4. 12 divided by 4 gives me 3. 8 divided by 4 gives me 2. Two x's on the numerator, 4 in the denominator. Two of them will cancel, giving me two x's in the denominator. Six, x, six y's on the top, three on the bottom. So here's my sixth finger. Six on the top, three on the bottom. Three of them will cancel, giving me three y's in the numerator. Work, answer. Showing work using three little fractions, reduce, 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 that is your answer. And there you go. Chapter five, section three, questions two and three. Questions two and three are both gonna be about long division using polynomials. Ugh. Now, if you think about division, long ago and far away, we had 9 divided by 3, and we read it left to right. We also had 9 divided by 3, and we read it top to bottom. And then we also had 9 divided by 3, and we read it inside out. You didn't know it, but left to right, top to bottom, and inside out are very common phrases, and that's because of division. This is a completely bogus story that I made up to help students remember left to right, top to bottom, and inside out is how you set up your division problem. So top to bottom, left to right, but what we're really going to do is inside out. Now this is a little strange. It's written in descending order by degree, but there's some missing terms. I have a 4x cubed but I don't have any x squareds, and I really want to have a zero x squared to hold its place. And I have a minus five x, 
But wait, I'm also missing a plain old number term out here at the end, extending this vinculum out inside, and this is out. So if we think about, let's go with something harder than 9 divided by 3. We're going to do 5 into 100, uh, let's see, 37. 5 doesn't go into 1, so we don't write in anything here. A binomial cannot go into a monomial, so we don't write anything here. 5 can go into 13 two times, and many of you know that we write 10 here. The reason is we have 2 times 5 gives me 10. And then we have to subtract. Many students do not show the subtraction, and then they end up adding, they end up doing something wrong. So here, that gives me 37. We bring the 7 down. If it makes you feel happy to put an arrow there, that's fine. 5 times what is 37? 5 times 7. So that would be 7 times 5 is 35. And we need to subtract it, and we get a 2 as our remainder. If we were to write it as a mixed number, I don't want you to put the point zero 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 and keep going. I want you to stop when we get a remainder because you're going to read it going around the world this way. It's going to be 27 and 2 over 5. 27 and 2 over 5. So we're going to do the same concept with this problem. This is from a long time ago. This is what we're dealing with now. This is a skill that Pikes Peak Community College has said. They really want you to know this. So we're going to look at the first term here and the first term here. 2x times 1 gives me 4x cubed. 2 times 2 will give me 4. And x times x squared will give me x cubed. Notice that I have my x squareds in the x squareds column. Just like when I'm adding or subtracting, when I'm doing my long division, the tens place is over the tens place. The ones place is over the ones place. That way when you get to the end of this, instead of putting a point zero, 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 that's when we put our fraction. Same thing is going to happen here. Just like over there, this work that most teachers do not need at this level of math, I suggest doing it for this level of math. We're going to do 2x squared times 2x minus 1. Note, monomial before binomial, we're going to distribute. We're going to get 4x cubed minus 2x squared. This answer is going to go here, 4x cubed minus 2x squared. Remember that over here, I used a different color to subtract. I'm going to do the same thing here. Since it's a binomial, I can't just put that, because that will only subtract this first term. I want to subtract the first term and the second term because that's distributing the negative. That's what's going to make this work. 4x cubed minus 4x cubed, some people want to cancel that out. That's fine. Some people want to put a 0x cubed. A little confusing, but hey, I can work with that. 0x squared plus 2x squared gives you 2x squared. If it makes you happy to put the little arrow bringing that down, that's fine. And now, 2x, the first thing, times what? will give me 2x squared, the first thing. 2x times what gives you 2x squared? That would be times x. But because this is a polynomial, I need pluses and minuses in between. This is not a polynomial. That's why we don't have little pluses and minuses in between. 2x times x gives me 2x squared. That's a positive, so I need to put a plus there. And x times our, bi our binomial. I'm going to distribute that and write it over here. Lining it up beautifully, that's really going to help us. Notice I even left some extra space here so that the x's line up a little bit better. And I'm going to subtract both of them since it's a binomial. Later on, you'll have a trinomial, and you'll have to change all three signs. So I'm going to change these signs only on the second line because we're taking the first line minus the second line. This first one will cancel. If this first term doesn't cancel, you've done something wrong, all right? Negative 5x plus x, if you need to have a 1 there, negative 5x plus 1x gives you negative 4x. If you need to draw the arrow bringing that down, it does make sense to have our 0 there. 
because we, want, we don't want to stop here. 2x times what gives me negative 4x? Well, first of all, the sign changed, so this is going to have to have a negative. And 2 times 2 is 4. That's an x, and that's an x. So hey, look, a plain numbers here in the plain number column. Our x's are in the x column, and our x squareds are in the x squared column. Negative 2 times 2x minus 1. We're going to distribute that. That is going to go under here. And we're going to change these signs. Because we're subtracting, that will change both of those. This first one will cancel. And 0 plus negative 2 gives me negative 2. Now, here we went around the world this way and we had the answer with a 2 on top of a 5. Because this is a negative 2, I don't want to have a negative 2 up here. I want this symbol, whether it's a positive or a negative, to go in the front. So that's negative 2. I probably shouldn't write it quite that small. Over 2x minus 1. If this was a positive 2, then that would be plus. But I don't want to have double symbols in my answer, just like I would not expect you to have something like x plus negative 3. I would expect you to simplify that to x minus 3. This is good. That would not be good. So I wouldn't want you to have plus negative 2 up here for the same reason. Long division using polynomials. You don't have to do this, but I have found that these steps of trying to distribute really help. I found that the changing the sign with a different color really helps students because I've seen students who said, oh, did I change it? Oh, I'll change it one more time. And so if you change it twice, you actually didn't change it at all because two negatives make a positive. Chapter five, section three, 121 for you. When I first came to this school, we were told, don't teach your students synthetic division. That is for the college student, college professors to teach you. Therefore, all the teachers at our school teach it. Because, hey, we're going to do this, and we're going to show this to you. Because synthetic division is used all over in college. And we don't want your first exposure to it to happen in college. It will give you the same answer that you'll get with long division with a lot less work. But our job is to teach you long division, not synthetic. So once again, top to bottom, left to right, inside out, however it's written, what we're going to do is we're going to take this. And if you remember, that should be written as x cubed, a placeholder, 0 x squared minus 7x plus 0 divided by x plus 3. So what we're going to do with this is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take i can equal 0 and solve that. We want it to be a one-step algebra equation because if this had a coefficient in front of x, it is significantly harder to do synthetic division. So this little number here is going to go in a little box in the corner. Then, the coefficients, the numbers in front. So there is an invisible one here. So the numbers in front, the coefficients, are 1, 0, negative 7, and 0. 1, 0, negative 7, and 0. Then, the two steps that we're going to do to solve this are we are going to first add going down and multiply going, whoa, like that. Here we go. I'm going to put a bar here because we're going to need a row for space here and a row for space here. And then between, halfway between these, I'm going to make this. So it looks kind of like a T, but it goes between the last two numbers. All right, we're adding, going down. 1 plus nothing is 1. Wahoo! Negative 3 times 1 gives me negative 3. We will now add going down. 0 plus negative 3 is negative 3. We will now multiply going woohoo! And negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. You could even put a positive 9. Then we add going down negative 7 plus 9 is a positive 2. Woohoo! Boom! Negative 6. And 
make no sense. Now let's talk about this. It's, it's a bunch of numbers on the board. That's nice. This used to be the x cubed and the x squared and the x regular and then the plain old number. When we divided it by an x, x cubed divided by x gives us x squared. So in this answer, this is the x squared term, the x regular term, the plain old number, and this is our remainder. So the answer to this would be x squared minus 3x plus 2 minus, there's our minus 6, over x plus 3. That is our answer. We don't want you to show work only like this. This is a lovely way to check your work, but let's try doing it using long division. x times what gives me x cubed? That would be x squared. Notice I'm putting in the x squared column. If you're okay with it, you might distribute and just write the answer here instead of writing it underneath. That's fine. x cubed plus 3x squared. We're going to subtract both of those terms and get negative 3x squared. If you need to draw an arrow, draw an arrow. x times what gives you negative 3x squared? That would be negative 3x. Notice descending order by degree is happening. Negative 3x times x plus 3. Negative 3x squared minus 9x. Changing those signs. And we get 2x plus 0. x times what gives you 2x. And we get a plus 2. 2 times x plus 3. Distribute, you get 2x plus 6. We change those signs and we get minus 6. We come around the world this way and we put minus. The 6 goes on the top and the x plus 3 goes on the bottom. And we get the same answer using long division or synthetic division. This one just has to do with adding and multiplying. Hey, we're multiplying and we are subtracting over here. So it's the same thing. This you'll use when your college professor tells you to. Until then, we're going to need to see this kind of work. But I wanted you to see that that is coming for you, and it's cool. Chapter 5, Section 3, Question 4. Using the remainder theorem. The remainder theorem, theorem being something that can be proven, remainder theorem, we're going to find out how to get the remainder for a long division problem very, very quickly. Why do we only want to know the remainder? It's because we want to know is it a factor or not. And this will be a very fast way of doing it. So step one, we're going to take x plus 3 and do i can equal 0 and solve this. Look at this beautiful work that the college professors are looking for adding and subtracting to both sides of an algebra equation. Now, we're going to take x equals negative 3 and we're going to put it in here. This time I don't have to have the missing terms. So I'm going to have 2 plug something in cubed minus 3 plug something in plus 45. The number I'm plugging in is x, which x is negative 3. Plugging in the negative 3, yes, I have to have the parentheses. Here I can have a dot or the parentheses. Order of operations from chapter 1. Groups first. There are none. Exponents next. There's an exponent. Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. I can't multiply all those at the same time, but negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Times negative 3 is negative 27. Multiplication next. Multiplication going left to right, that's negative 54. Multiplication here, plus 9 plus 45, adding and subtracting last, going from left to right, that will give you negative 45 plus 45 gives you zero. That is our remainder. So it says, hey, what does the remainder equal? The remainder is equal to zero. Now, is it a factor, yes or no? Let's think about a number like six. The factors of six are one and six and two 
than 3. So we're going to pick a number that we know is a factor of 6. We're going to take 3 and divide it into 6. 3 times what gives me 6? 3 times 2 gives me 6. 2 times 3 gives me 6. Using a different color, subtracting it, and we get a remainder of 0. Hey, if I take a factor and divide it, I will get a 0. So is it a factor? I got a 0. So if it's 0, you circle yes. And if it's not 0, you would circle no. Now be careful. I have a few students who actually take this negative 3 and plug it in here. And what they'll get is they'll get it equal to 0. And they'll say, I'm dividing by 0. And that doesn't work. We don't plug it into this one. So step one is we're going to take this and solve that for x. And then step two is we're going to plug it in just to this side here. So we have used the entire problem. This answer is our remainder. And then if it's 0, you say yes. And if it's not 0, you say no. Now, this is going to be on the calculator portion of your test. So if you have your calculator, your calculator is powerful enough to put in this entire thing just like it's written. You can have two parentheses, negative three parentheses, cubed. You can either do cubed by doing up in the corner is three or by hitting math and the third one down is a cubed. Minus three parentheses, negative three, remember the difference between a minus and a negative, and then plus 45. Hit enter and it will give you zero. So technically what I need to see is I want to see this work here. I want to see the plugging in because that tells me that you use the remainder theorem. And I know that some of you know that negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. I don't want you to just write 9. I want to see that you are able to plug because that's what the remainder theorem says. Chapter 5, section 3, question 5, type 1 of 2. Now, this is the answer to a long division problem. And we, what we want to know is what the question was. We want to go backwards. You often find that the question 5s will teach you how to do something forward, and then we'll turn it around and teach you to do the same thing backwards. Part of this is that the question 5s are a harder skill. We want to know, can you check the answer? If you understand how to do this, you can actually go back and check your questions 2 and 3, your long division problems. So before we get to this, I want you to think back to long ago when we had something like 2 and 3 fourths. Yep, I was using it as example 2 and 1 third. 2 and 1 third. This is a mixed number, an integer and a fraction. And we want to make it into an improper fraction. The way we did that is we went wee around the world this way, and we multiplied those numbers, and we added that. So we did 3 times 2 plus 1. 3 times 2 plus 1 is 7 over 3. This is the number that we're looking for. We want to know what that original top number was. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to take this times this plus this, which in this case is minus. Keep these polynomials together. So you're going to have x minus 4 times x squared plus 2x minus 3 minus 3. This is the answer, but it's not simplified. But if you can write this, I would give you half credit. Then you have to multiply it. So remember, two things times three things will give us six answers. Don't forget this. It can't disappear and then reappear. So I'm going to write out all six answers. We have x cubed plus 2x squared plus, nope, minus 3x. Hmm, I could keep going, but maybe this time I'll have it underneath. I want to support all the different types of learners. So we have negative 4x squared minus 8x plus 12. And then we have this minus 3. I can put it after here, or I can put it under here. Whatever works for you. Vinculum, we're going to put all this together. Add it going straight down, we have x cubed minus 2x squared minus 11x plus 9. That is the answer. So 
long ago and far away, the original problem would have said x cubed minus 2x squared minus 11x plus 9 divided by x minus 4. And if you were to do the long division on this problem, that would be your answer. Chapter 5, Section 3, Question 5, Type 2 of 2, yay! We're going to be solving some funky problems like this. This is a volume problem. Some of you might not remember, but for an area, you just do length times width for a rectangle. This is a rectangular prism, meaning a 3D rectangle like a tissue box. And so, the formula is volume equals length times width times height. That is a cursive L. So volume is length times width times height. Here is the volume, and here is your length, width, and height. Usually, length is a long one, width is that one, and then height usually goes up and down. But hey, because of the commutative property of multiplication, we can change the order. We're going to formula and then plug. We're going to start off with 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 12x is equal to, I'm going to write monomials first, and then the binomial next. Note that I'm using parentheses around the binomial. You're going to need to be doing that because in chapter 6, it is going to be vital. We're supposed to find y in terms of x. y is right there. So what this means is when we're going to solve this, we're going to have y equals all by itself. but it's not going to be like y equals 3. It's going to be y equals some sort of polynomial that has an x in it, most likely. If you have a professor who wants the single variable to be on the left-hand side, you would actually have to switch the order on this. We're solving for y. I could divide by the monomial or the binomial. If you think about chapter 5, section 3, the very first question was dividing by a monomial. That's the easier one. We're going to start there. All of these are being multiplied together, so I only have to divide all of this by x once. There are three different terms. If you think about 5.3 question 1, we had it all divided by x, and then we separated into three little fractions. Let's separate into three little fractions now, because we learned something from that first question. Now, these are back in chapter 1. We can reduce, reduce, reduce. And we can get 2x squared plus 5x minus 12 equals, these x's canceled, and we're left with y times 2x minus 3. We're solving for y, so we have to get rid of the 2x minus 3. We're going to divide by 2x minus 3, and we're going to divide by 2x minus 3. That looks like a job for long division. Another reason why this is a job for long division and not a job for synthetic division is there is a coefficient in front of x that would make the synthetic division much harder. So 2x minus 3, 2x squared, 5x minus 12. Oh, x squared, x to the invisible first and no x's. Hey, all the terms are there. That's wonderful. 2x times what gives me 2x squared? 2x times x, keeping that x in the x column, multiplying x times 2x minus 3, which gives me 2x squared minus 3x, keeping everything lined up, using a different color to subtract 5x plus 3x is 8x minus 12. 2x times what gives me 8x, that would be a 4. 4 times 2x minus 3 gives me 8x minus 12, and some people might say, hey, that's going to match up very nicely. It is. We're going to change those signs because when you're doing your long division, if I am grading you on long division, I had better see this, even if it's a zero. We have to get all the way down to the remainder number down here. The answer is x plus 4 with a remainder of zero, which means it's just x plus 4. So here, we're going to write that y equals x plus 4. But wait, there's more. We need to label. It's a picture problem. We need to label it. And it doesn't actually have a label there. It does say units cubed. So if you remember, volumes get units cubed because they're three-dimensional. 
areas get units squared because they're two-dimensional and everything else gets units. This is just one side of the prism, so therefore this is all labeled with units. Yay! That is why it's y in terms of x, the answer has an x in it.